business guy. I'm doing my thing. I got wind of this. I want to. I want to. I want to do something nice for this guy. Here are some plane tickets for the family. Tickets to the game. Go enjoy. Is that a violation? Yes. I don't know why. To me, it's not. But to the, the, the uh, NCAA, it is. So if you're a private, so I'm an IU alumni. Let's say I'm an IU alumni. I'm a private uh, citizen. But you would be considered an OSU booster if you do if you did something like that. Huh. All right. The the crazy. It, and, it's but, but here's the, it, it, it's so ridiculous. It's all just made for the NCA can make money off these athletes. They get nothing, and the NCA can make all the money they want off of it. That's really what the uh, rules are designed for. Well, I certainly agree that they should make money off their namesakes. Now, here's the other thing. A lot of people were up in arms about, no, we don't want that either. Well, you got you to gotta take the bitter with the sweet. When I get my check on my payday and I get a pay stub, well, I don't actually get a pay stub anymore, but it's all online, whatever. I, I can look at my pay stub, and I see that there's certain deductions, and one of those deductions is payroll tax. Because I have to pay taxes. Well, if they are able to make money on their namesakes or able to get a job or whatever, they're going to have to pay taxes. A lot of people think, no, that's not that's not what we want. We just want free money, and let's just let them – that we should be able to make millions of dollars off of our namesake but never pay a dime of tax. I don't agree with that at all. If you want to get paid, pay the taxes. Well, yeah, well, that's where they can run into trouble you know, for tax evasion or – Whatever the the law would be, because yeah, when you turn eighteen, yeah, and you start getting paid, if you do something, and the company you work for doesn't, it's not every company takes taxes out. Some some co- companies put that on you, so you have to hold back a certain percentage of your money every year, right? So uh, that's going to fall on them. So yeah, they can make the money, but they're going to be responsible for figuring out how much tax is owed on money they make. So. And- Point of this equation, they felt like, well, most of these kids aren't even 18 years old yet, and some of these kids could make millions of dollars off their namesake. They don't know how to handle that kind of money. Uh, that's why they have an agent. That's why that's when they get into the pros. Of course, once they get into the pros, they still don't know how to handle that kind of money, and we see it get jacked up all the time. But the, the saga goes on. But he, at, the, at this point, as the way we understand it now, he's suspended indefinitely. Do we look at that being changed to? Maybe the rest of the season or what? I think it's probably going to be one or two games. Uh, it would shock me. I think they play Penn State, which is a huge game next weekend. It wouldn't shock me if he's back to that Penn State game because I don't see this being a big deal. It was a loan. He paid back the loan. It's not a benefit. It, I don't see anything illegal here. Uh, but I'm not an inside guy either. But uh, to me, it, it's it was, a, it was a loan. He paid it back. Yeah, you know, it, it happened over a year ago now, or close to a year ago. So uh, I just see him sitting out this Maryland game and being back next week. But one or two games is all I, I, I could see happening here. Yeah, absolutely. And unless they want to go all hardcore and say uh, you can't play in the postseason, <laughs> I don't see I don't see NCAA yeah, that'd be, that'd be doing ridiculous. that. <laughs> be ridiculous. All right. Well, let's let's move on. You know, we were we were joking a little bit about this, but let's have a serious conversation. Florida State Seminoles needs a coach. Uh, rumor has it, and it's more than just Twitter at this point. Uh, like I said, when I first heard the story, it was kind of like a Twitter thing. All right, let's just, let's have fun with it. Let's see what happens. But you got some pretty serious outlets. Fox Sports talking about it. ESPN's talking about it. Colin Cowherd's talking about it. Kurt. Is talking about it. Clay Travis is talking about it. Clay Travis said in a tweet something about he needs to go. Oh, Boaz, I'll have to find the tweet. But so yeah, there's more than just Twitter talking about it. Well, look, Florida State is one of the blue blood programs of college football, and you can't just take one of those type elite programs and hand it over to somebody who's never coached before, right? I don't care if. It is Deion Sanders. He's a superstar. He might be the best, the biggest name ever to play for Florida State. I mean, I mean, it's Charlie Ward, not nearly the name. A, they have tons of superstars at Florida State. He might be the biggest one. But you just can't turn the program over like that uh, to, to somebody who's never coached. If you could, 
How come Bo Jackson's never coached at Auburn? How come Joel Montana's never coached at Notre Dame? Uh, it, it doesn't work that way. It's fun to talk about. Maybe there's some substance behind it, talking to him. But really, I think that job comes down to two guys. Neither one of them, like I, told, I texted you yesterday, neither one is named Dion or Urban Meyer. <laughs> I agree with the uh, Dion part. Urban Meyer, there, there could be some argument about that. All right, go back to Chase Young. I was trying to pull up uh, uh, Clay's uh, tweet, Clay Travis, one of my idols in the world. But he said, uh, if I were Chase Young, I would pull a Nick Boza. I, if I'm going to be significantly investigated by the NCAA, what's the value of playing November? All he can do is injure himself. He's going to be in the top five, five pick anyway. It makes no sense for him to continue. If you're, if you're Chase from? Young. Clay Travis. Yeah, that's right. Uh, here's the thing. You know, uh, the Dolphins actually won a game, and everybody thinks they're tanking for Tua. Uh, the Bengals could be doing the same thing. Uh, here, here's the deal with these NFL teams. If Chase Young decides not to play another game for Ohio State, he's still going to be the number one draft pick. Uh, any team who does not take Chase Young, number one, whoever gets the first-round draft pick, and they take two over Chase Young, no longer deserves to be in the NFL, period. Uh, Chase Young is one of those dynamic players that can change games uh, already. Uh, he is a Joey Bosa type and a Nick Bosa type. Uh, he's probably even better than both of them. He, he's a guy that you game plan around the impact that he'll have in the NFL. So any team in the NFL does not take Chase Young number one, even if he plays another snap. This year in college football, he will still be the number one draft pick. And if somebody doesn't take him number one, then that NFL team no longer deserves to be an NFL team. So, yeah, I think Clay Travis is right. Uh, maybe he should just sit out, not risk getting injured. It happened to Jalen Smith with uh, Notre Dame a couple years ago, played the Fiesta Bowl against uh, Ohio State, tore his ACL. He was the clear-cut number one draft pick, and then the Cowboys took him in the second round. He lost out on millions of dollars for getting hurt in the Fiesta Bowl. So this is that same scenario. Chase Young is that type of player. Maybe he shouldn't play another snap because he will be the number one draft pick. So let's move on to uh, the biggest game of maybe the season, but certainly of the week, LSU and Alabama. And uh, yeah, still piggybacking off of Clay Travis. You check out his stuff on outkick.com. But he, he – I'm not going to go through all of these. But it, his article is if you uh, – are an Alabama fan, I'll give you 15 reasons why to hate LSU. Here's just one of them. LSU players smoke synthetic weed. Smoking synthetic weed is like having sex with a blow-up doll, which is not surprisingly uh, in the second favorite pastime of the LSU fans. Oh, and by the way, the first in DUIs. <laughs> so as we uh, – oh, and LSU fans smell like corn dogs. And he, he goes on, 15 reasons why Alabama fans hate LSU. This is a big rivalry. This is going to be a big game. But, uh, I mean, that's synthetic weed, man. Come on, i got to get the real stuff. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I didn't know. I thought you was going to keep going. <laughs> oh, Look, yeah, this game is, is, uh, oh. uh, it, this game comes down to how healthy Tua really is, right? Because he had that high ankle sprain, he's going to go today. Uh, is he really 100%? Is he not 100%? It's just this some gamesmanship by Nick Saban. It's going to come down to how healthy Tua is. But uh, I still don't think I don't think uh, Alabama can keep up with LSU. LSU is one of the top uh, scoring teams in the country. I like to rank second in scoring. You know, they score over 30 points a game, and, and Bama's defense this year is not that great. I mean, it really isn't. Uh, I don't know. Bama has the athletes. They're probably the best receiving core in the country, but I just don't know their offense against LSU's defense and LSU's offense against Bama's defense. I just don't think uh, Bama can keep up in this game. I think LSU's going to win. All right. I said I would, I, I, I would leave it there, but this is, this is great. Top 15 reasons why Alabama fans don't like LSU. Number 10, two words. Demarcus Russell. Yes, I know, even though Audrey Smith, pedendulous man boobs think Demarcus Russell also resembles a fat woman with herpes at Mardi Gras. In fact, the crowd outside B the BCS title game there, a 99% chance that Demarcus Russell is flushing, flashing his boobs for beads on Bourbon Street. 
<laughs> yeah, didn't the Marcus Russell win the Heisman though? Yeah. Was it 05, 06? I mean, he did nothing in the NFL, got drafted by the Raiders, and then never heard from him again. I don't even think the last of the season, but I think he won the Heisman. I think he did. I think you're right. Well, let's have a serious discussion about one of the biggest games of the week, the X's and the O's and the, uh, on both sides of the fence. If you're LSU, you got to beat Alabama. you got to make that statement. you got to beat Alabama. But Alabama come in healthy, it's going to be hard uh, for LSU. So what are some of the challenges on both sides of the coin here? Again, uh, you got a number one and a number two. They don't get there by accident. Well, unless you're Alabama and you just get there. But that's, that's neither here nor there. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's what Alabama could do against LSU's defense because LSU plays real defense. Uh, I, I, like I said, I don't think Alabama's defense is as good as they have been in the past. This is kind of a down year for their defense, and I just don't think uh, – they don't have much of a running, running game either. It comes down to that great receiving core and how healthy Tua is. I just don't think they can keep pace with LSU. I mean, it's, it's going to be body blows all game, but I think LSU is going to – pull this one out. I know it's at Alabama, so that makes it tougher on LSU, but LSU has been in big games two or three times this year. This is the first big game, first big test Bama's came across, you know, for once they're not playing a team uh, called uh, Chattanooga State or something, you know, so I I think LSU pulls this one out, and it might even be like a 10-point win, because I think LSU is legit. Uh, their uh, defensive backfield, Grant Delpit. Yeah, these are NFL draft picks all over the field for LSU's defense. I just don't think Bama has uh, the defense to slow down LSU, and I just don't think they'll keep up with them. Well, let's uh, get into the other big game of the week, and that's uh, uh, Penn State and Minnesota. Uh, Penn State ranked number five, but Minnesota's undefeated. Again, we go back to strength of schedules, but this should be a, a very good game uh, in Minnesota today. I hope it's a good game. The only problem is Minnesota has not seen a team yet like Penn State. They haven't seen the size and speed that Penn State's going to bring. I know it's in Minnesota, Uh but Penn State plays in front of over 100,000 people every week, when, you know, at least when they're at home. So I, I don't think it's really a home field advantage for Minnesota whatsoever. Uh, it's great to see Minnesota 8-0, and and P.J. Fleck is a great coach. I just don't think they've seen the athleticism of what Penn State is, about, is uh, getting ready to bring into uh, the, their stadium today. Real quickly, and, and then we've got to go into some Notre Dame talk before we end this segment. Uh, IU is ranked number four, uh, and in the uh, uh, in the uh, and they're seven and two overall, but number four in the Big Ten. When was the last time we saw that happen? Let's play the home card. IU ranked number four in the Big Ten standings, above Michigan State, mind you. Yeah, yeah, but who they beat? You know, nobody with any type of substance to them. Uh, look, I'm not trying to diss IU, but you can't take them seriously at the same time. I love that they're seven and two. And if you want to talk about Tom Allen, uh, he's actually been mentioned as a candidate for the Florida State job. Uh, I don't see that happening either. But his name is out there. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't even tell you who I think the two top two coaches for uh, the Florida State job are. Yeah, I just said they're not named Dion and Urban. But uh, okay, who are Tom the Allen's top name two has been mentioned out there. Okay. Oh, it's Matt Campbell and uh, Mark Stoops. Well, between those two, everybody knows Mark Stoops is going to get the hire. I just don't know if it's between those two. Yeah, well, I don't know but why. Why would he get to hire? I mean, he's done a good job at, at Kentucky, but Matt Campbell's done a hell of a job at Iowa State. So, uh, you know, there's Chris Kleiman out there. You know, the head coach of uh, Kansas State. He's won Division two national championships. He just beat Oklahoma two weeks ago at Kansas State. His name's been mentioned. Uh, the fun uh, one coach is Kelly enough. of Notre Dame. Coach Kelly yeah, of Notre that's Dame. Yeah, fun one. They, Brian Kelly. Here, here's the good Twitter rumors. Like Brian Kelly says, ten years at Notre Dame is good enough. Goes to Florida State and Urban Meyer comes into Notre Dame. <laughs> Wouldn't you like that combination to happen? All right, let's get and, into and Notre Dame. Notre... Happens, if Notre Dame is like pisses away all their morals and, and and hires Urban Meyer, makes a deal with the devil to bring a national championship, I'd be good with that. <laughs> that would go against everything they stand for, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Let's talk Notre Dame real quickly before we got to wrap this segment up. But Notre Dame on the road against Duke. 
man, Notre Dame's got some wins. They got the W in the W's in the W column. They they are checking that box off. But my God, 